is there such thing as planner peas? And it's a common conversation in the planner community. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about finding the perfect planner for you. What is the perfect planner? This is the second part of my video in 2023 planners and what's changed. And I really wanted to talk about this because I would love to help others out who are also kind of new to planning or have been planning for a while and are still finding the perfect planner. Yes, we have options. Yes, we buy all the things because we choose to and we want to use them and we want to find out what works. But for me, I think it's really important to kind of talk about the planning system and help you figure out what is the perfect planner system for you at your moment in your life at your current stage your current journey and hopefully this will help first of all you can see that i have several planners on my desk these planners are planners that i'm not all currently using right now but these are planners that i do have because i want to share the options and i also want to share specifics now the first thing that you want to think about is what type of planner are you are you someone who is a lister? Are you someone who is a tracker? Are you someone who is a tasker? Are you someone who just writes down monthly appointments? And I will show you exactly what I mean. So this is a monthly section in my Hobonichi Weeks. And as you can see, I like to list all my appointments I like to see all my appointments and I like to really pay attention to what's going on for the month. In addition, if I go to my weekly, you will see I am also a tasker and a tracker. What does that mean? I like to track my sleep, my mood, my meals because I have IBS. I also like to track my movement, spending, and bowel movements. Again, related to IBS. My tasks are weekly tasks or goals that I would like to accomplish. And then these are daily logs or basically things that I accomplish every single day or need to accomplish every single day. And I need to write it down. And then when I accomplish them, I put a line through it. Right here is my main focus of the day, whether it's an appointment, whether it's going to the supermarket, paying a bill, whether it's garbage day. I need to make sure I have that listed here. And the same applies for last week where I also wrote this in. And you can see, again, task, tracking, daily goals or a daily log, and then the main focus. So this is the type of planner I am. And you really want to think about the type of planner you are. Are you someone who likes to just kind of create a weekly spread and write down what you need to accomplish, what you need to do? Are you someone who likes to track your sleeping, your mood, what you eat, your reading, your time at work? Are you someone who has to accomplish things within an hour, two hour schedule? Are you a routine person? Do you accomplish things by routine? Morning routine, afternoon routine, evening routine, a workout routine, your planning routine. So you really need to think about that when it comes to planning because it will help you figure out what type of planner you are and then you could kind of break down even further as we go along what planner you will need. Now, you want to think about what is your preferred planner layout or style? So what I mean by layout is I will show you two options here. I'm going to move this planner here and I'm going to move this planner here because I have two perfect examples right here in both Hobonichis. So first I have a vertical planner and I am going to try to go to an empty page. So here is the vertical planning system for the Hobonichi cousin. A vertical planning system is a system that is time-based so it'll give you like a schedule between five to five. So this is a 24-hour schedule. I'm going to show you another option. You don't always have to follow along with this schedule. You can kind of 
put in the tasks that you need to accomplish for the day. So this is a vertical. A vertical planner will go from top to bottom. Whereas in the Hobonichi, and I'm going to go to a blank page, is horizontal. This is a Hobonichi Weeks. This is a horizontal system. So it's going across. You could also use this side to do vertical tasks or you could do horizontal tasks. Whatever you want to do, you have the option to create kind of your own system on the side. But for this side, it is horizontal. This is a horizontal layout. And I will show you another option with my hemlock and oak. Again, opening up to a blank page here. This is a vertical system, again, from top to bottom going down. And the hours are from 6 to 10. So again, vertical is top to bottom, right? And it gives you a schedule and you go write your tasks all the way down or what you need to accomplish or you want to put what time you're doing something. This is a great planner for that. And then the Hobonichi Weeks is horizontal. Now, the other style that is also available is known as bullet journaling. You can either have a dot bullet journal or a graph bullet journal. This is an example of a graph bullet journal and it's going to be harder to see the lines because this paper is very bright white. But if I go to a spread here, it'll kind of neutralize it. So this is a graph bullet journal. This is a bullet journal where you can create literally whatever spread you like and there are various types of spreads there's various ways to create different things so if i wanted to show you my you know yearly view here my 2023 yearly overview this is the spread i created using stamps and pens this is a tracker that i created using just pen and markers and it's a yearly tracker i have my months here my days going down here same thing for my social media tracker months going all the way down here and I'm keeping track of social media. So really you have whatever option you want to create your weekly task, daily task, whatever it is. This is a weekly system here. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I gave myself space for notes. And this is basically a weekly system that I created. And then here is where I will write my notes. So this is another type of planning system. So a bullet journal, you have either dot or graph. You have your vertical planning system or your horizontal planning system. So that is something really, really important that I wanted to share. Now, the next thing is how will the planner fit your needs? And this is something that you really need to think about, okay? So are you going to use this for work? Are you going to use this for school? Are you going to use this for your personal life? So again, I'm taking my Hobonichi Weeks. And I will show you other uh, planners here in a second. But I just want to show you my Hobonichi Weeks. This is what I use every day. This is like my archive everyday planner that I love flipping through at the end of the year. So again, I am someone who's using this for appointments for task in my home and for personal projects that I am doing. So this is a personal planning system. This has nothing regarding work, nothing regarding social media or content or anything like that. This is just my personal planner. So anything regarding home, life, my parents, anything regarding my son is going to go here and this is where everything is written down and I use it for my personal task home hub. So in terms of my Hobonichi cousin, this is a sample of what I use this for. I use this for memory keeping. So basically, I am going to write down my memories, things I want to remember, things that I felt, or things that just happened in the day. I could look back and see what happened, and I could definitely see like, okay, this happened this day. Oh, I was really happy about this things like that. So this is a very good way for me to keep track of things that are occurring in my life. So that is my memory keeper. There are other planners that you can use for specific things. So my bullet journal is my social media journal and I kind of want to incorporate my book reading. 
I thought it would be fun. So I'm going to try to figure out a way to do that. But I basically am tracking my social media. So this is for the month of February. This is my content. This is when I film and edit. And then these are going to be what I write down every day in terms of, or I plan weekly, not every day, but I basically will plan weekly what I need to do every single day for that week. And then I start again on Sunday, plan what I want to do every single day for that week. And then I put a line through it. If I did it, if I didn't do it, I will move it across and I'll show you an example. So hold on, let me see. So right here is an example. Like I put an arrow to it because I needed to move this. It didn't happen this week. So I moved it over to this week. So really, you really want to think about what you are going to use your planner for. My last example is this pocket planner and this planner basically was like my parents planner. So I had an inbox for them. I had, and this is when I first initially had them move in with me and I have doctor visits here, right? So this was like their medical health planner and I zoomed you in a little bit more. Then I have their health log here. I also had a weight log here, right? And that was for me. And then I would keep track of my parents. But obviously, I moved it out because I transferred it over. Then you have a monthly. Now, keep in mind, for the pocket, it's going to be very small. So you have a limited amount of space when it comes to that. And then you have a weekly. Again, the space is very limited. It's small, so you really want to think about, is this going to kind of fit my needs? Is it going to fit what I'm using the planner for? Is this going to fit my lifestyle right now? So these are questions you need to ask yourself. My bill payments, so like what bills need to get paid? And it goes through the year, like the date, the bill name, the amount, and then whether I paid it or not. And this is a very brief little pocket planner and this was my parents pocket planner that I decided to put their information in until I transferred it. So this is another example and you really want to think about what you're using your planner for. There are other planners that you can use for faith planning. There are budget planners. There's fitness planners or fitness tracker planners. There's also meal planners. So you really want to think about what you want to use your planner for. So you want to think about what type of planner you want and what is in your budget. We have had many planners come out this year. We love options. And what I love is that we are inspired and empowered to purchase what we want. We make these choices, right? So you also have to check what your budget is, what you're willing to spend on a planner, and how much you allotted or how much you choose to spend on something you are going to use to help plan and organize your life. Once you do that, you can think about what type of planner you want. Do you want a book bound planner? These are options I'm holding here. Do you want a ring bound planner? Okay, and this is a ring bound planner that I have here. I like to just keep this as decor. I love my Louis V. It's not getting used. I really just love to keep her here and hopefully we'll pass her down. And I have another ring bound system that you just saw here. Okay. So that's rings or do you want coil, right? Do you want a coiled system? So this was a coil system I had and I used, but I found out quickly that coil planners are just not for me. I have very big handwriting and I don't like my hand getting in the way of the coil. So that's just my preference. And there are other types of planners known as disc. And when I get my disc, I will share what disc are, talk about disc in general. So you want to think about what type of planner you want. So I will show you my Hobonichi Weeks. My Hobonichi Weeks has monthlies. Okay, so this is a monthly view. It also has weekly views going in horizontal. And then it also has, let me go to a page that doesn't have anything, a note section. And you can basically write down whatever you want in that section. So I have an index here like showing different things like when I hit 4k on YouTube or appointments or anything like that. This is where I look for that. 
So that is my Hobonichi Weeks. And I will close her now just to make sure she's all in there. Then you have your Hobonichi Cousin, which is technically like an all-in-one planner. We also have a monthly view. And then we have a weekly vertical view. And then I'm going into the month of February. We also have a daily view. This is literally like the all-in-one planner that people talk about because it has an index, monthly, weekly, vertical, and daily. So you could do everything all in one. I like to memory keep and journal in this planner. This is what I love using it for. And then I also love just decorating it. Every year is a different vibe. And I wanted to go into soft girl season and I'm trying to progress over that, which is another word of mine, but I really do love that. And then here is a bullet journal. This is another type of planner where you create your own layout. I already explained this. Then we have our rings planner, okay? And there's, there's different types of ring planners. So this is a pocket ring. This is also a pocket ring. This is more like a pocket wide, and this is just a regular pocket. Now, the Louis Vuitton pocket agenda literally comes with super tiny rings, but she is gorgeous, and she is like one of my purchases that I love. And then I have this pocket here, which is a known as a pocket wide, more or less. And this one allows you to fit a lot more things. The rings are larger. They're like 30 millimeters. I like keeping chunky planners. And then I can basically use whatever inserts I want. And with inserts, you can customize whatever. So in this one, I had an inbox system. I had my weight log here. I had my monthly here. I had my weekly here. I had my bills here and then i had like some other inserts but i think i took it out so you can customize this right you could also add dashboard the same thing with this you can add dashboards so or dividers so i have an inbox here then i have projects here so these are my dividers projects list trackers right miscellaneous weekly ish dinero which is money then we have a today section. So I was utilizing this, you know, very, very, very customizable. And I loved it. So that is something you want to think about. What kind of planner system you want. Here is an example, again, of a coil system. Basically, coil systems are systems where you can literally fold it on. It's, it's super easy to write on this side, right? But this is my issue with like coils. Like I can only go up to like here when I'm running in a coil on this side because my hand gets in the way. But this is a coil system. It's basically coils that are keeping your monthly and weekly together. So I'm going to go to a month that probably was not used. So I'm going to show you August, right? This is a monthly view and here's a weekly vertical. I found out also that I prefer horizontal planning. So once you figure out what type of planner you want and your budget, so this is like $55. This is like $23 for the Hobodichi Weeks. The pocket planner, let me tell you something. The pocket planner, you can get a cover like this. This cover I think was maybe under $100, but it still was in like the $90 range. The larger your planner, the more money you're going to spend on it, obviously. Then you ha also have to purchase dividers. You also may want to purchase dashboards or laminates, and then you have to also purchase inserts. These are known as inserts. So you also have to purchase inserts, which is also part of the budget. So this is why some people preferred bookbound planners because, you know, they can just basically get a planner that is a basic planner, comes with the monthly, comes with the weekly, comes with notes. They don't have to buy dividers. They can buy tabs, and these tabs are pretty inexpensive. And that's it. You can literally use a pen, marker, and that is all. This cover, I bought it from Sojourner. It was, I think, a little over $100. But I love the cover. It protects my Hobonichi cousin, and I like protecting my planners because I want to keep them 
in good condition. This is another planner cover, which was more expensive. It's from the Aristocats line. It is also from Hobonichi, and it's shipped from Japan. And I love this planner. The planner itself was like $55, but then I bought all the stickers to decorate my planner along with my planner tabs, which were also inexpensive. And then I have deco here. Or you could just do something very basic with your bullet journal. You can get ephemera or you don't have to purchase ephemera. You can literally write the date and then write down what you're doing. So you have to think about your budget and what you want to spend on. This was a splurge. This is obviously a Louis Vuitton pocket agenda. It was a splurge. Here is another planner, right? So this is literally the Moleskin pocket planner. You all have seen this. This was $9.99 in Barnes and Nobles. The Traveler's Notebook, right? You, you have this here. This is very affordable to purchase, but everything that goes along with it, like these card cases, this one right here, which is for your cards or change, and then the cover, they all cost money. So you really want to think about what is in your budget. And finally, let's talk about your preferred planner size. So we have options here. I'm going to show you. The Hobonichi Cousin is an A5. Hemlock and Oak is an A5. As you can he see here, the Traveler's Standard Notebook, which this in itself is a very different type of planner because it has strings. You attach it this way. I have a setup video. I will link it. I will show you how that works. But you can purchase inserts in terms of monthly or weekly verticals. And you can also get your, you know, little decor that goes in this planner but this is also an A5 size but everyone calls it like an A5 slim because literally it is slimmer than your A5 but it is an A5 size this is the Hobonichi Weeks and the Hobonichi Weeks is not as tall as an A5 so it's not technically an A5 it's also slimmer than Traveler's Notebook so that is important to keep in mind this right here, even though the pocket moleskin is a pocket size, my cover is an A6. So this is an A6 in comparison to your A5. And this is your A6 in comparison to your Hobonichi Weeks. And then we have our pocket planner. This is a regular pocket planner size, right? And then we have an A5 in a coil bound. It's a little smaller, but you can also have an A5. So you can see, look, A5, A6, pocket. Let me move this A5 out of the way because I'm going to bring in the pocket wide here. All right? We have a pocket wide. And then we have a pocket. So there goes that. Again, A6, pocket wide. You could tell it's very wide. Regular pocket. And then we have a personal size. And this is another ring planner that I had for a while. And it's just on the side here. This is a personal size planner. Again, much smaller than your A5, but just about as wide. So you have to think about what size you want. And then when you think about the size you want, you also have to think about, okay, so where am I going to use this planner? Is this planner going to be on the go with me? Is this planner going to be on my desk? Is this planner going to be in my purse? So a good purse planner would probably be like a pocket planner because it's small enough that you throw it in. I even suggest the Hobonichi Weeks because believe it or not, the Hobonichi Weeks can easily fit in a slim purse as long as it's, you know, a little longer <laughs> Hobonichi size. Um, but it is really small. It's a very thin planner and even with everything in it, it's still very thin. You have your A6 size here. This is something that you can also easily fit in your purse because it's not that big, but it is a little thicker depending on how much you put in it. And then your A5 size. I, I do know people who take A5 size planners to work. So when it comes down to finding the perfect planner, finding your perfect planner, planner piece, you really have to think about all these questions like what type of planner you are, are you a lister, tasker? What is your perfect planner layout? Do you like a horizontal? Do you like a vertical? Do you want something customizable? So where you purchase your inserts, right? And they're customized for you. So your inbox insert here. This is your doctor's visit insert here. These are all from Peanuts Planner Co, by the way. Your health log here. 
Then you have your monthly here. So I believe the monthly is from Simple and Trendy Co. or Peanuts Planner Co. I really do not remember. This is Simple Trendy Co. So could be that. But there are different options where you can customize your insert. So you have to think about that horizontal, vertical, or you want something more customized. You also have to think about what will be the specific need of your planner. Is it for work? Is it for school? Is it for faith planning? Is it for budgeting? Is it for meal prepping? Is it for finances? Is it for personal tasks? You really have to think about that. And then what type of planner do you want? Do you want a book bound planner, right? You want a book bound planner? You want a ring planner? Do you want a coil planner? Do you want a disc planner? You really have to think about that. And then what is your preferred size? You have so many options. So this is an A5, this is an A6, this is a pocket wide, this is a personal, this is a pocket, and you have the options here, right? And you basically have to figure out what works for you. And that's the thing. When it comes to planning, you're not gonna know what your perfect planner is because you literally have to purchase it, use it, and figure out whether you like the system, whether it's working for you, or whether it's not working. And depending on where you are in life, your specific journey, you also have to figure that out. So you have to think about what you need, and you have to think about where you are in life. And yes, there are so many options but the beautiful thing about social media is that you can become inspired, you can get ideas, you can purchase something if you choose to purchase it, and if it fits within your budget, and then see if it works for you. And if it doesn't work for you, you say, you know what, that didn't work, and move on, and, and find something that does. So I really hope this video helps. I really hope you got something out of it. And let me know in the comments down below if you would like a video talking about the accessories and things that you need for planning. Once again, thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.